Mr. Friend, the debate in the past week about the latest proposals coming out of the White House about whether the President's latest stimulus bill or the tax hikes he's proposing will help or hurt the economy. But based on what we're hearing from the White House this week, it's hard to see the point in having any debate at all. I'm referring, of course, to a comment by the White House communications director <clears throat> who told the New York Times on Monday that the president had entered what he referred to as a new phase, a new phase. He said the president may have worked with Republicans to avert a government shutdown last spring and to raise the debt ceiling this summer, but that, quote, that phase is behind us, end quote. In other words, the White House isn't interested in actually accomplishing anything anymore. It's more interested in making a point than making a difference. So here's my question. How do you explain to the 14 million Americans looking for a job right now that you're more interested in motivating campaign supporters than in motivating businesses to hire? For the past week, the President's been running around the country trying to set a record for the number of times he can say, pass this bill right away in a five-minute stump speech. Meanwhile, his communications director is telling people the president doesn't really expect the bill to pass. And the Democratic majority leader of the Senate is treating it like a legislative afterthought. My friend, the majority leader, said yesterday he might take up this supposedly urgent bill next month after he's had a chance to deal with the Chinese currency bill and a few others. As for the other Democrats in Congress, well, they're not exactly rushing to get it in the queue either. I mean, this so-called jobs bill seems to be about as popular as Solyndra. And I'm just talking about among Democrats. Yet the president's out there acting like somebody's actually putting up a fight. So this whole thing is a charade. And I think the American people deserve better. I think they deserve a president who realizes that governing involves working with a situation as it is, not as you would like it to be. President Obama may think the best way to distract people from the challenges we face is to stand near a bridge in a swing state and pit one group of Americans against another and hope his critics look bad if they don't go along with him. But I don't think he's fooling anybody. I don't think all the campaign stops in the world are going to convince most Americans that the real cause of our problems lies anywhere other than with the policies that are coming out of Washington these days or that the single greatest obstacle to job creation in America today are policies that punish the risk takers and the entrepreneurs that stifle investment and private enterprise rather than rewarding it. When it comes right down to it, I think most Americans care more about results than about rhetoric. And let's be honest, the results of this president's economic policies speak for themselves. After two and a half years of government spending, Here's what we've got, record deficits, chronic unemployment, median incomes going down, poverty rates going up, and a first ever credit downgrade. This isn't exactly a record to be proud of. So I can understand the president wanting to change the topic. It might make him feel better. It might energize his strongest supporters, but here's something it won't do. It won't create jobs. Look, if we could solve our jobs crisis <clears throat> and revive the economy by passing the hat <clears throat> at Warren Buffett's annual shareholders meeting, we'd have done it by now. But we can't. Why? Because that's not a real solution. It's a campaign slogan. The president said the other day that tax hikes he's proposing aren't class warfare. He said they're math. Well, we can do math, too. So let's do the math. According to the IRS, if you doubled, doubled the tax burden on everybody in America who earned more than a million dollars in 2009, you'd cover the cost of about three months of deficit spending around here. If you doubled the tax burden on everybody in America who earned more than a million dollars, back in 2009, you'd cover the cost of about three months of the deficit we're running around here. If you confiscated every dime 
of taxable income from those the president refers to as millionaires and billionaires. Take it all. You wouldn't even cover a single year of deficit spending in Washington right now. Spending more money in Washington won't solve our spending problem. It will enable it. How about the stimulus? One of the programs in the stimulus was supposed to create 65,000 jobs. So far, it's created 3,500 at nearly $11 million per job. $11 million per job. Solyndra was supposed to create thousands of permanent jobs. Two years later, more than 1,000 Solyndra employees are out of work altogether. And the American taxpayer is on the hook for more than a half a billion dollars in loans to the company. But here's the most important calculation. Not a single new job will come about as a result of the tax hikes the president proposed this week. Not one new job. As the National Federation of Independent Business puts it, new tax increases on America's biggest job creators are the last thing the economy needs to get back on track. What else do we need to know? Republicans are ready to work with the president on turning this economy around. We know what would work, and after the past two and a half years, we've certainly seen what won't work. So my suggestion to the president is the same now as it's been for months. Put aside the political pay playbook, work with us on policies that will actually solve the problems Americans care about the most. Let's work together on policies that are aimed at motivating job creators, not your political base. It's time to change course.